Hello everyone, in this video I'll be taking a look at Pop! OS, which is made by System76. It is based on Ubuntu 20.04 and comes with the GNOME 3.36 desktop. Now I couldn't help but thinking with this distribution that uh, how standards proliferate by XKCD. Because what is the need for a hardware manufacturer to roll their own operating system? That's not to say it hasn't been done before. HP, Samsung, yes they seem to spring to mind. It's one of these things, I can't see any hardware manufacturer trying to roll their own version of Windows just to compete with Microsoft or just because they want a different theming. Anyway, we have the Linux kernel 5.4, which is a long-term support release kernel. It does have quite a few differences to Ubuntu in that we don't have snaps here, we have flat packs instead. So I've actually installed a few flat packs on this system, so let me do that again so we can actually look at things here. So. Yeah, I think most of these I've actually installed myself, although I've ended up with the Pop GTK theme. So one of the party pieces of Pop OS is the theming. I do have to say it is a very pretty operating system. Yeah, I do actually have to compliment them on that. And that is quite important to make a brand stand out. System76 do some really good pictures with their devices. So it's no surprise really that they've managed to theme the operating system so well. <laughs> the year 2525. Do you think we'll actually make it to 2525 at this rate? Mm -hmm. Anyway, this is very much stock GNOME, so it is different to Ubuntu. Just because it's based on Ubuntu doesn't mean it's the same at all. Although you could say it's closer in relation to Debian in that case. But there is one feature strangely lacking in Pop! OS uh, that was actually in Ubuntu, that is fractional scaling. I know it's enabled here, but I had to do some tweaking with Dconf Editor. And as soon as I adjusted the scale, it um, it wasn't happy. <laughs> Not a happy bunny at all, are we? Ubuntu seemed to be okay. Now there is a warning from GNOME that it is an experimental feature, so what can I complain about here? You've glitched up on an experimental feature. But this feature works in Ubuntu. Uh, as soon as I decline the setting, it's returned back to the default. Although from what I've read about Pop! OS, they've got better graphics card support than Ubuntu has. A feature that's been included in Pop! OS is the tile windows. I spent a good day or so actually using the operating system before reading up on the features, and after enabling this feature, I still wasn't really interested in it, to be honest. Uh, I suppose because I've got two monitors, I, I don't tend to use this sort of layout too much. I prefer to position my own applications. I suppose there is a nice reminder here about tiling window managers, so if that's something that suits you then yeah, that'll be a, a nice feature. Uh, you can change the gap around the windows, uh, by default it was uh, 2, which you know, just looked a bit ridiculous to me. There's a mention about a launcher here, which is super and forward slash to navigate between the windows, so let's have a look at that, super and forward slash, so you can press up or down arrow keys to select between the applications that you have open or you can launch a new application. So if I type something in, uh, Chrome, yes, shock horror, I had to install Chrome. Don't know what was going on with Chromium. I, I'm not sure what they've done to it, but uh, yeah, it was a bit kneecapped really, to be honest. I couldn't seem to synchronize my session back with Google, which is a bit annoying really, because uh, yeah, well, this is how simple it should be, turning on sync. Yeah, couldn't do that in Chromium. I was actually using Pop! OS for work, so I really needed my work bookmarks. And keeping on the subject of browsers, there's actually quite a lot of help on the System76 website regarding Pop! OS. How to make use of certain features, or oh, mention there about switching between the Intel, Nvidia and hybrid graphics, as well as talking about issues and software and features. There's going to be an awful lot I'm not going to be able to get around to mentioning in this distribution, but yeah, just uh, showing a glimpse of uh, some of the features here in the help guide. And I'll take more of a look at Pop Shop. This is an alternative to the Ubuntu software installer. So if I go and search for an application, let's say Inkscape, come on, right, which do you recommend first? Well, you recommend the Debian install first. So that is a contrast to the Ubuntu software installer, which recommends the snaps first. No such option here, we don't have snaps. I see the main difference as being a graphical appearance, really. But functionally, they're pretty much the same. Although for editing the repositories, we have this application here called Repo Man. 
So that's the normal sources, that's what we expect. But the extra sources, we can see that there are a couple of System76 repositories. Oh, and the one for Chrome would have been added when I installed Chrome. And the Flatpak source is just the default for Flatpak. For manually installing deb files, we have Eddy, which did the job, it worked fine. We used that for installing Chrome. Yep. It's a program called Popsicle, which is a USB flasher. Oh, that's nice, you have a hash checker there. I'll open up a couple of Flatpak applications, so Inkscape. One of my complaints with Snap applications was the theming. I think they're actually somewhat more advanced over Snaps, so maybe it was a good idea that they went with Flatpak instead of Ubuntu doing whatever mess they're doing with Snaps. Audacity seems to be themed correctly, that's one that definitely fails under Snaps. Uh, VLC do we call that themed correctly or not? I don't know, it's a, it's a different colour there in the menus. A bit, bit of a difference there. I know I said a couple, but might as well keep going. We've got Cadian Live. Might as well go for a Qt application. Uh, slightly different again on the menus, but uh, that looks like the Breeze Dark theming there. And for the final Qt application, we'll go for Kate. Uh, yeah, got different again. So yeah, that's, that's a a bit different uh, on the menus, but I don't think any of them look particularly hideous, it's just not consistent. So they have some sort of theming, a mixture of light or dark themings. One thing worth mentioning is they all have a consistent mouse cursor, and that's another thing where Ubuntu just seem to fail on really. Not until the latest version with the GNOME, Mate and KDE desktops did it seem to work better. XFCE desktop though, yeah, still not very good. I've shown you lots of generic features about the operating system, but now let's take more of a focus on what System76 have done. So they force a full disk encryption. So on boot up we have please unlock disk, crypt data. Oh, you know what, I think I've actually typed that password wrong. So I'm just going to get rid of it. I'm going to press shift and home and oops. <laughs> yeah, that, that happens when you press uh, shift and home. And if I press page down, page up, you know, all, all, those, all those keys above the arrow keys. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, don't know what I'm meant to do here, really. Control Alt and F1 goes back there, and uh, yeah, I can type the password properly, and let's get on with it. Oh no, <laughs> exceeded maximum number of tries. <laughs> I actually only pressed Enter there once. I know it gives you more than one attempt at getting in, so let's do this properly. Although it's a full disk encryption, I haven't really noticed any performance impact here, but um, I really wouldn't take that as a given because, yeah, I've got quite a nice setup here on my computer and quite a fast uh, NVMe drive. So no doubt that will go a long way to offsetting any performance impact. So I'm just looking at the installer here. It is a bit of a different installer, I'll give them that, it's very nice and fancy. But on first look at the operating system, you can really see a lot of work has been done on making it look nice and fancy. And the only password you choose at this point is the full disk encryption, as the remainder of the install is carried out upon reboot. I wonder if that was to facilitate doing an OEM install. So what to say about Pop OS? Well, it really does look very fancy. There's no way I can fault them on that. It's a very nice theming. System76 have done a really good job on the styling. But it doesn't really seem to be a perfect running operating system to me. Uh, just seeing this comment from Charlie Henson that he can't even get it going at all on his system, and that doesn't exactly appear to be a lightweight system. I had problems getting Chromium going, but I see that System76 had to provide a version of Chromium from Debian. Since Ubuntu do not supply a deb version of Chromium, they force you to install a snap version, which obviously wouldn't have worked with this operating system. I was surprised at the lack of fractional scaling, since Ubuntu have managed to implement that feature. At least it does not appear to have any of the privacy concerns of Ubuntu, and it provides System76 with a great showcase piece that they can put on their computers, and they've provided an installer so you can put it on any other computer. It has given them a nice image, but does it really improve Linux? Or has it just provided further fragmentation? Well, thanks for watching, I'll see you all later. Yeah.